I'm Peter Haddock and I'm here in the rain, typically for the UK at the moment, folks, talking about live dig radar from Rod Radar. First time I've actually seen it in action. However, for those of you close to my channel, you'll have seen Con Expo a few years ago where I discovered this technology now being brought in to the UK by the team at NDIG. And the team have got one of the world's best excavator drivers to come and actually test it for us, Pete. You are a very experienced operator. You just literally used it. We've done some filming just moments ago for the first time. As an operator, obviously the big one of the big concerns for you is utility strikes, whatever you're doing, isn't it? Indeed, but yes. Tell me a little bit about your experience and, and your extended experience of, of operating this machine. Well, I've been operating machines since 1974. Wow, I was born then. <laughs> <laughs> Makes me feel very, very old. <laughs> but experience of this, maybe 15 minutes. But it does exactly what it says on the tin. It finds what you're looking for in the ground. So when we're talking about discovering utilities as an operator, and, and you know a lot of people in the operator community over the years, it is something that's always concerning, isn't it? You've got water, but you've got electricity, you've got gas underneath the ground, and that's really critical that you don't hit um, those utilities, isn't it? No matter how experienced you are, it's always a hit or miss yeah. experience. You've got to have labourers around you to to look, try and explain where it is, but it's not an exact science. And so with this sort of live dig radar, what has happened today? You've got a tablet in front of you right there. What have you actually been able to do that's different to what you would usually do? Well, it finds the services for you. Yeah. It pretty much pinpoints it pretty accurately exactly where it is and how deep it is below you. So you've got that on this tablet there. It's giving you some yeah. readings, some, some height and depth readings, and um, you're able to just then press a button, aren't you, to, to do the scan? You carry out a scan to begin with, and then it pinpoints roughly where, well, not roughly, pretty much exactly where the service is, and within... 20, 30, maybe 50 mil of the depth below you. What you've seen here today is you, you've dug it down deep, about a metre or so mm. down, um, where we buried some um, pretend utilities for you. Yeah. And um, that means you've been able to sort of dig with confidence to the top off yeah, and, and then I, get, get I, closer, hasn't it? I'll admit to begin with, because <laughs> I've never done it before, I didn't trust it. But Yeah, absolutely. It, it, is, it does what it says on the tin. And so, folks, it's literally underneath the actual bucket itself there, the radar system that's then connected into the cab here. And that is then connected in this case to a Miller quick hitch. Um, and all of that's then calibrated for the machine so that the data comes back up and forward. Now, I noticed you were doing um, two sort of scans um, on, on that there, hitting the screen and doing two scans of the area. I think there are two possible ways to run it. You can do it with a double scan or a single sake of trying it we've tried both but it's pretty accurate in both so yeah that gives people the extra um confidence when you, you're going into a dense area to scan it twice folks and it's really important but the one thing we would stress about this folks is this is the the last line of defense for people we expect when we go onto a job site which has utilities and we know they're going to be there that they are surveyed properly using ground penetrating radar using the proper techniques but what this is about is it's about you, Pete, isn't it? It's about you, the operator, and, and you having that sort of confidence that, that you know, whatever has been done, you've, you've got an extra helper in the cab, haven't you? Yeah, and it keeps the man out of the trench for longer. He's only got to go down there for that last 20, 30 mil of dig. That's a good point, actually, folks. One, really, which Pete um, and I know other operators are concerned about, people being close to the, the, the actual plant itself. Yeah. You're trying to dig a hole, but you know you don't want to be thinking about necessarily people that are standing there for too long when they're not needed, I guess. You no, know, because every time you look around, there's a guy in there looking for that cable. <laughs> he doesn't need to be there anymore. Yeah, so there he is. You've heard it from uh, Pete here, and uh, he's been operating for a good while, folks. Started when I was born, and I'm just about to turn 50. So fundamentally, this is what this is all about experienced operators testing things in a live environment uh, and also for the first time 15 minutes and you know 
an operator has got the skills to know how to dig, to know how to grade, and to know how to actually pull that bucket nice and steadily to get the scans. So what we're saying here, folks, is Pete and the team here have now been able to say there's a last line of defense for them, but there's also a reason why people don't need to get into a trench in weather like this for a longer period of time. So folks, it's new. I've seen it a couple of years ago. I'm gonna to talk to one of the experts because this has been um, in America and Canada for some time now with lots of people trialing it out. And again, what I will stress for this folks, all the technology I talk about, it's always about making sure we do the very best at every level, at every stage, understanding what's going on on the job site and therefore looking at technology solutions where we can all work together in a safer environment for everyone. So we can all go home, Pete, at the end of the day and uh, a safe way. Thanks very much for talking Thanks to you. us. Hi, Cheers. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers, Peter.